light of the world. I am the gate for, I am the door for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. These statements are fairly typical of John's gospel, which is full of this lovely metaphor and symbolic language. What I mean is that Jesus is not literally bread or light or a grapevine or a door. He was not literally a shepherd. He was a teacher, right? He was, he was a Jewish rabbi. He's not literally resurrection and life, but God's resurrecting power and God's abundant life were revealed through Jesus. He was not literally a path, a, a way, a road that's been cut into the earth. He wasn't literally truth. Truth is an abstract thing. But his life exposed a clear path, a clear way for us to discover the truth of God. In the verse I just read, Jesus says, I am the gate. But some translations say, I am the door. That's how it's rendered in the King James Version. And I think I must have first heard this passage and this story from the King James Version because this is how I always remember it. I remember Jesus saying, I am the door. And this morning, well, actually, the whole week leading up to this morning, I've been thinking about Jesus as the door. There are several well-known paintings of Jesus knocking on a door. You may be able to recall a few of those paintings yourself. And that imagery is based on Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, where it says, Listen. I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you, and you will eat with me. It's beautiful imagery, isn't it? Christ knocking on the door of our heart, waiting for entrance, waiting for a place within us to abide. But in John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus isn't knocking on the door. He says he is the door. I am the door. I am the entrance. So the story that goes along with this verse is about sheep and their sheepfold. Jesus is talking about a sheepfold, which you may already know is a pen or a corral where the sheep are gathered in, usually at night, in order to keep them safe when they're not out roaming around in the field, grazing in the field. And Jesus is saying in this passage to those who will listen to him that he is the door to this pen, to this corral, to this place of safekeeping. He is the entrance for the sheep to go in through so that they can be kept safely in the sheepfold. In Eugene Peterson's translation of this passage called The Message, Jesus says, anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. The complete Jewish Bible says basically the same thing. If someone enters through me, he or she will be safe and will go in and out and find pasture. The passage that I read from the New Jerusalem Bible says anyone who enters through me will be safe. Such a person will go in and out and will find pasture. So the picture Jesus paints for his listening audience, for us, right? We hope we are his listening audience. Jesus paints this beautiful picture of sheep and the pen, the corral, the fenced-in area where the sheep are gathered together in order so that they can be safe. But just as Jesus isn't literally a door. He's not talking about 
a literal sheepfold or literal sheep. He's talking about a gathering in of people, isn't he? He's talking about a community of people. And Jesus positions himself as the door through which these people can enter into a non-threatening, peaceful, safe community. John's Gospel is all about relationship. It's about relationship and salvation through relationship. It's about the relationship of God to Jesus and Jesus to God and the relationship of both God and Jesus to the Holy Spirit. John's Gospel is where we hear Jesus say things like, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. He says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me because John's Jesus is all about relationship. He's all about this interconnected relationship between the Son and the Father, between Jesus and the God whom he not only adores, but whom he reflects and whom he reveals. But this gospel is also about human relationship as well, and how we should live together in harmony. <clears throat> John tells us <clears throat> that we are called into relationship with each other by Christ. We're moved to love each other through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Our lives are made complete when we abide in God and God abides in us and we abide with each other. In John's Gospel, Christ calls us into community. He calls us to partake in the presence of God and to partake in the presence of each other through the Spirit that unites us. In this holy relationship of love, we are cared for and we are cared about. We are saved and we are safe. That is such a gracious, such a gracious and a, a comforting portrait of the church, the, the resurrection community, the Easter people. Don't you find that comforting? When I gather with you, with Christ in our midst, I'm in a safe place. I'm in a protected, loving place. I can gather with other people in other places, in other situations, and I, I might not be all that safe. That There are some gatherings where I might find myself in which I, I don't feel cared for. I don't feel protected. But Christ in our midst calls us into loving relationship. So if Christ is indeed in our midst, then our gatherings are going to look quite different from gatherings we might see out in the world, right? Right. Our, our relationships and our gatherings are going to have the character of love and of, of peace and of great welcome. We are cared for here. We are safe when we enter through the door of Jesus into the community that he opens up to us. And I love that imagery of the church. But there's something else here, something more to consider about Jesus as the door to loving community. I told Palmer earlier this week that I wanted to focus my message today on just this one verse, this door verse. <clears throat> and in our conversation together about this door verse, Palmer reminded me of that old adage, don't let the door hit you on your way out. Right? I laughed about it for a little while. But, you know, after some of his toolage and, and some, some deep and careful thought, I began to understand 
the wisdom of his words. And suddenly I saw something in this passage that I have never noticed before. Jesus isn't just the door that community enters into. He is also the door through which community exits as well. And I don't mean to imply that he slaps us up against the back when we leave, but he does kind of give us a, a gentle nudge, right? A gentle push. We aren't supposed to just go in through Jesus. We're supposed to go out through Jesus. And I, I never thought about that going out part of this verse until Palmer reminded me and, and warned me not to let the door hit me on my way out. You know, sheep don't go into the sheepfold and stay there forever and ever all men. They go in to rest, and then they go out to find pasture, just as we read in, in the passage this morning. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. Such a one will go in and out and find pasture. Pasture. Now, going in and coming out and finding pasture, that's symbolic of an abundant life. But when sheep leave the sheepfold to find pasture, they are doing the work of being sheep, which entails that that work of being the sheep enfolds and encompasses this abundant life. What seems obvious to me now about this passage, after spending the whole week thinking about Jesus as this door, that was not obvious to me before. But isn't that the call of God? Doesn't the presence of God incite us to go out into the world, to do the work of God's sheep? And God incites us to go out through the same door that we come in to with our focus on Christ, this one who, who knocks on the door of our heart, and this one who opens up for us the door of community where we are safe and where we are loved and where we are cared for. Walking into community through the door of Christ binds us together in love. And walking out through that same door sends us out into the world to be in the world as Christ is in the world. And to do the work of Christ as this loving community of Christ. And the work that we are called to do is feed the hungry, right? Clothe the naked. Care for the poor. Visit those who are in prison. Welcome the stranger. Take care and minister to the sick and those who are dying. That is exactly what the sheep are commended for in the Gospel of Matthew. Do you remember that story? In Matthew chapter 25, the king gathers his sheep together and he thanks them for loving him, for welcoming him, for feeding him, for clothing him, for visiting him when he was in prison, for taking care of him when he was sick. And the sheep say, when did we ever do that for you? And the king says, when you did that for those who needed these things, you did that for me. See, I am the door. I am the door through which the community enters to share my love with each other. But I am also the door through which the community leaves their gathering to be out in the world and to do the work of the community, the work of loving the world the way that God so loves the world. We come into this sheepfold to be welcomed, 
to find rest and to know that we are cared for by our Good Shepherd. And then we leave the sheepfold to find pasture, to do the work of the sheep, and to invite others to come in and to go out through this door that is Jesus Christ, our 